Trav, welcome to Ask the Pros Business. You know, um, where we talk to business people like you, you know, in a way, share their business journey, business story, you know, in, in that, in, yep. in sharing your business journey and business story, you're just talking about the challenges, the success stories, you know, how you've dealt with such challenges as well, you know, in a way, yep. trying to help other businesses as well. Yeah, you know, so yeah. I I came up with these ideas. Said, you know, I I, I want to talk to business owners. It's in this period, a lot of business is struggling. Business owners struggling, you know. So if guys like mm. you that have been in business for a while can <clears> come on the show, share your journey as a business owner. Hopefully, some business you know owners that will listen to to, to this yeah. interview would pick a thing or two to help their businesses as well. You know, yeah, and you know what? Like when you know, I've been in business my whole life. You know, I've actually never had a job. So I think I'm pretty unemployable, <laughs> to be honest. I don't, maybe maybe I, don't, I don't take orders from others. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's a whole other conversation right there. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, <clears throat> it, it is that, that survival that, that um, you know, getting punched and getting up, you know, getting punched four times, getting up on the fifth is a, I think is a rare commodity. It's these sort of things that do make you or break you. It's what all the memes, it's what all the Insta, you know, um, sayings are all about. But right now is where the strong really do survive and where, where your adaptability as a business owner, it's, it's key. It's crucial. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. So Trev, um, at this point, you, you can want to tell the, the community, the listeners, a bit, a bit of a backstory about you, you know, who, 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 who Trev is, how is Trev growing yeah. up as a kid, you know, just to be a backstory about you, you know, so, so the community, the listeners, sure, will, man. yeah, who, who Trev is. Yeah, for sure. Look, I, I, um, I, I'm in uh, Melbourne, Australia, uh, which is, yeah, southern part of Australia. So we're coming into winter right now. I, I, I'm looking out right now. If you turn, <clears throat> turn this camera around, I'm looking out in the ocean. Oh, okay. Southern Ocean, sh- Southern Ocean of Australia. I grew up surfing and doing surf lifesaving, sort of Ironman, Ironman racing, lifeguarding and that sort of thing. And it was always, pretty much always a jock. Um, I think that's what they call it in America. <laughs> always into, <laughs> into sport. Uh, grew yeah. up as a surfer, as a swimmer. And um, that naturally led me on to uh, do a, a phys ed degree. Okay. And uh, I, in the third year uni, third year uni, I started this thing called personal fitness training in the in the early early to mid nineties. Um, and I was one of the first personal fitness trainers in Melbourne, here in Australia. And I that, my first business, I started getting clients in third year uni. Took that from you know, from one client up to a franchised chain of personal fitness training studios around Australia and help tens of thousands of clients and their families, you know, get motivated, get fit and did, did close to 2 million personal training sessions. And <clears throat> that business was going for about 20 years. Um, I grew it into a bit of a monster, sort of became someone that I didn't like and, you know, let some, uh, went through a, a, a bit of a, a dark patch, my own, you know, breakdown before breakthrough moment. Um, went through a bout of, oh, when I look back on it, mild depression. Found myself in life coaching courses, learning NLP, learning positive psychology, all this sort of stuff. And then someone said, hey, why don't you teach this stuff? And and I um, put on my, my first ever public seminar. And at the end of that seminar, someone actually called me the bucket list guy. And uh, I went home that night and registered the domain name, the bucket list guy. And that was 10 years ago. And since then, I've been running around the world doing my bucket list as a tax deduction. <laughs> and, and also, uh, but also basically doing mine and, all, uh, and most importantly, helping others to, you know, uh, to, to live their life, live a regret-free life rather than a regretful life before they get given a use-by date, you know, to help wake people up. Um, from sleepwalking through their life, stop living by default, you know, live by design. And that's what I've been doing for the last 10 years. Okay, Trav, that's great, great, great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So as, the, as, as, a, kid, as a kid, yeah, were, were you, what, what were you fascinated about? Were you, what, what were you passionate about as a, kid, as, as, as a kid? So I'm trying to build up a backstory why these yeah. are, um, you know. Oh, my, my, you know, like, it's a good question because I'll look back on, you know, like, your values is your internal rule book, you know, and 
I've I've always you know wanted to do work congruent with my own values. You know, I, I don't want work to be work to be a thing that I despised. I don't want work work to be hard. Um, in terms of you know going, to, I saw my I saw my my dad go to work every single day hating what he did. You know, and and, and that had a ripple effect into the family, and. I knew through personal training, in early days of personal training, there was a lot of very unhappy people out there who were, you know, just doing a job that they didn't like and uh, just complaining about it all the time and not actually changing. And I'm like, you know, early on, I got the taste of being an entrepreneur by opening, you know, opening up my own business and also being around other entrepreneurs that I modelled. And I got a sense of you know, creating my own destiny rather than, you know, being employed by someone and being their bitch, so to speak. And at the end of the day, I, you know, choose a career that you love and you never work a day in your life. I think that's kind of bullshit as well, because you, no matter whether it's your business or, or not, you're always working. But I just, I just thought life's way too short to be doing something that you disengage with. I think life's too short to uh, you you must be doing something that you're at least passionate about that that you enjoy, um, and so what you see now is something that is certainly modelled around my own values, around who I am. It's an extension of me, and that's kind of a new concept that I talk to about people. It's called work life blend, and I think the holy grail, if you, you the holy grail of picking something that produces the time flow and the cash flow for you to do your bucket list and you know, if it's something that doesn't do your head in on a day-to-day basis, then I think that's a double bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, but it was like always said- wanting to help. Always wanting to help people. You know, that was that was my thing. Always wanting to help people was is one of my highest values. If I'm not if I'm not doing that, oh sure, health and fitness is is right up there. Having fun, adventure is also up there. But helping others, if I'm not helping others, then I don't feel um living my values if you know what i mean yeah 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 i understand yeah like like you said you know just a minute ago um having your own business also means you have to be account uh, accountable to to others as well you know like yeah. like what you were saying i'm i mean i mean bit of that trance now myself because i've i've worked i've worked on my life so now i've looked at my journey and said you know i can i can do something better you know it's not as if i don't love what i'm doing right now but i, I know that i can I can have my own time, you know. Yep. So in in interviewing people doing podcasting and all that, you know, it's a it's a bit of it's a bit of way to to call kind of like move that scale for me and say, you know what, yeah. this is this is this is employment and this is you know um doing what you love. So I'm moving yeah. the scale a bit from from for my for myself now, you know, trying to right, get right. that balance myself, you know. So for someone like yeah. me or people out there that's struggling, they're they're thinking, you know, how do how how do I live this employment life? You know, how do I how how do I get this balance, you know, how do I, you know, move to what I what I love, you know, how how do I do mm. that? Like stuck in sort of saying stuck in gear one, you know, what would be your yeah you, what would be your take on that for, for well, someone? That well, awesome you know reason. what? It's interesting you ask that question because I deal a lot with people that are in jobs who want to do their own business, you know, they, but they don't know how to leverage leverage themselves away from that and then go and then go bang, you know, and get into it. Um, <clears throat> and I think a lot of people do it very, very wrong because – you know, they build up resentment in their jobs or their careers or with their boss or with the people around them to the point where they go, no, nah, enough is enough. I'm out and I'll start my own business. You know, they might even go to a, a seminar that says, go start your own business. And then on Monday morning, they go in and, they go in and, and, and you yeah. know, quit. Yeah. It's, that's the stupidest thing that you could ever do because you've got to, you know, I, I call love to have to, love to have to seesaw. So right now, a lot of people who might be listening or that, that question comes from is a lot of people are doing the have to job, but they love to, the love to job is down there. And what we want to get it to is like that. Okay. So it's, it's love to up there and have to down there. So the seesaw, seesaw swings in the opposite direction. The fact is a lot of people try and 
go like that overnight <clears throat> without building up the cash flow, without building up the network, without building up um, the repeat business that comes with with any business, let alone a, a love to or a passion kind of based business. Um, a lot of people don't get that foundation right first before they quit, before they leverage out. Okay. And so people have got to look for uh, flexibility in what they're doing now, some days off, some work from homes, whatever it might be. And then, in the, and then start to get this hustle, the love to hustle, the, the new business, whatever that might be, get that making money before you even think about, you know, going in there on Monday morning and quitting, and quitting. quitting, quitting your job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or at least, you know, and I think, I think in this day and age, what is more secure? I, I don't know. You know, is it, is it having, having a job or is it, or is it running your own business? I don't know. But, um, I think more, I know, I know for a fact, actually more and more people have a side hustle, uh, than, than ever before. More people are, uh, starting online businesses like never before people. There's more contractors than, than employees, they're they're uh, going up more and more and more in in most countries around the world. People are contracting to brands more and more rather than be employed by brands, so they can contract therefore for to a lot of different brands. Um, and there's more and more remote work teams. There's you know, so the game has really changed, and it, and it gives us a lot of opportunity. Um, it, uh, for us to to craft and design what is our our new business model you know right in the middle of over the last two months people have have adapted innovated like never before collaborated like we are and, and there's there's so many new and interesting business models that people can, can attach themselves to going forward out of this whole COVID-19 lockdown thing people have had to adapt and gone online and but people still are, um, because of the resentment that might be building up, or the or the overwhelming entrepreneur itch that you might that you might get. Um, you still got to be patient. You still got to be commercially smart to get that love to have to balance right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patience, patience, yeah. patience is key. Patience is key. It really is, and it sucks, but it, it is. It it really is key, mate. And uh, yeah. So so my, um, you know, I'm working with a client right now that that is involved in a, a, at a at a very senior position within a company, and we sat down and, and we just started coaching. And he's like, <clears throat> I said, mate, give me the date. You know, give me the date and when you when you're going to leverage out of this thing and really think about it. Be smart. And I did all this with him, and he's like. That's going to be an eight month to a year project. That one, I'm like, yep, well, that's that's good. If you said next week or next month, I would have sacked you as a client. You know, you need that you need that kind of long term vision to really lo- you know sow the seeds. And I said, all right, well, by the time you quit, you know, leverage out. Um, what what does your business actually look like when you quit? Well, I want to have, you know, I want to have, what do you say, eight, nine, ten clients all paying X number per month, uh, dollars per month by the time I quit. Now, now that's smart. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. I want to have X number of products sold or services or contracts, you know, you know signed off by the time that happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You need to, you need to, you need to, you need to plant. Well, when you plant as well, you need to water the water the plant as well. You know, for the plant to grow. So you you you, yeah. you don't just you don't just plant and the next day the the the, the tree the tree is all up. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That that yeah. that doesn't that doesn't happen overnight, does it? No, it doesn't. And 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 look, here's the thing. You know, like if you look at the business statistics, and I'm sure they're the same over in the UK as they here in Australia. You know, eighty percent of businesses fail in the first year. Something Absolutely. crazy like that. You know Abs- why? Absolutely. Is because they don't have a foundation before they, you know, b- before they they do quit, or or they've they've leveraged out of their other jobs, and they haven't got the skill set, they haven't got a mentor, they haven't got a coach, 
who can collapse timeframes for them to, to go, no, let's, let's look at this objectively, not subjectively, because, you know, it's very hard to look at this stuff when you're in amongst it and it's you. So you need to, you know, maybe have someone around you or, or to look at the thing object, you know, objectively and go, okay, I need to have that, that, that in place beforehand. Um, and I've got to be honest, you know, I, 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 it's a whole, you know, if you've ever running your own business is scary as hell because it's, it's now, it's not the publicly listed money that you've been playing with. It's your own. Yeah. It's your own money. It's not what's it, you know, it's what's in your bank account. And it's like, all right, dude, you're going to pay rent. You're going to pay for your car. Now you're going to pay your insurances. You're going to pay for everything else. And then put your own salary on top of that and you, you get close to your, you know, how much working capital you actually need before you break even. Yep. You, you do that sum, you look, at, you look at how much working capital a person needs to start their own business, which includes their own salary before they break even on their product. And uh, that can be a big figure. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. Um, Trev, you've I've, I've I've been to your you know been to your website you know read a bit about that. You've done very well for yourself, you know, and you've 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 now built those brands to become a very world brand, you know. Now, in terms of building a brand, Trav, you know, how, how have you managed to do this? Because, you know, a, a lot of us sound like me as well that, that wants to know that wants to that's building my brand as well. We want to know the steps you took to 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 cover this this niche for yourself you know because it's it's a very hard thing to do you, you I'm, I'm very sure yeah, you, know yeah. that, you, you, you know that now you know so how have you managed to yeah. you know, stay up there and make make sure that you know your, your brand is well known around the world now yeah it's a really good question man um the as far as uh, there's there's kind of like <clears throat> there's a per, there's two different types of brand there's company brand and there's personal brand all right, I'm kind of running two. And first, first was, is my bucket, the, the bucketlistguy.com brand. Uh-huh. Mate, I, when I registered the bucket list guy, this is how like nuts I am, is when I actually registered the bucketlistguy.com, when someone actually called me the bucket list guy after the first kind of crappy seminar that I'd put on, <laughs> um, I went home that night and I went, yep, bucket list, the bucket list guy.com. I'm like, well, if I call myself that, it means rather than just bucket list guy.com or bucket list.com, if I call myself the bucket list, no one can mess with me. I was going to use another word there, but no one can mess with me. And uh, I'm like, all right, cool. That makes sense. And then I went onto the Google machine. This is me on Google um, going, uh, who's like the Mac Daddy? Who's like the king? Who's like the expert in the world on bucket list? Oh, look, no one. So I literally called myself the world's number one bucket list expert. <laughs> and, and mate, I, that, and I'm like, I, I've just been the type of guy that, that, <clears throat> that, that digs it, you know, throws himself in the deep end, deep end to learn how to swim. So it's, Still, ten years later, people I've got I do media nearly every other day, and they're like, "Hey, you're the world's number one bucket list expert." I'm like, "Yep, yep, I am. Yep, I made it up, but oh yeah, <laughs> no one else was saying it." So the point being is running with that, and and what that business actually is is some would class me as a coach. Some would class me as a speaker. Some would class me as an author, a video blogger, a a, a blogger, a CEO, founder, speaker. Uh, some would a speaker, and so I don't class myself as any of those. I because there's <clears throat> that's a that's how you that's a modality for how you get your expertness out in the world. Okay, I'm that. What I'm just what I'm describing here is actually a thought. What's called a thought leadership practice. That's how you create your own brand around an expertness. You know, first first things first. And I've coached a lot of speakers around this as well. Is to get out of speaker mode and get into being a thought leader. What that means is you've got to be an expert in something. Mine is obviously the the filter that I run everything through is bucket list. Now that I'm an expert in bucket list, and they say, I they say I actually say pick a highway, yep. and then pick a lane, 
and then own the own the freaking lane. Yes, right? absolutely. Pick a highway, pick a lane, and then own the lane. You know, and that lane is an inch wide and a mile deep. Then create a heap of brand, you know, products and services off that off that expertness. So I'm an ex a thought leader around the around the idea of bucket lists. That's it. How I monetize that is through six different channels. One, I speak. I'm a speaker. I'm an author. I'm a coach. I'm a mentor. I'm a facilitator. And also, I'm a trainer. There are six different modalities to get my expertness out in the world. Does that make sense? It does. So someone might not want to do <clears throat> come to Mount Everest Base Camp with me or, or see one of my talks or... Um, but they might want to, you know, that might be a bit expensive or they don't want to buy a coaching program from me or don't want to do one-on-one coaching with me, but they might want to buy a book. But still they're getting a a piece of me, um, through that modality. So as a thought leader, as a thought leader that sort of sits above all these different, those are six different modalities to get you, get your expertness out in the world. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like it's like spreading yourself as much as you can, you know, to to well, reach yeah. different people. Yeah, well, that's it, you know, and and <clears throat> it would be presumptuous, and I, you know, unfortunately, I, no one, not everyone, can see me speak live. Uh, they can do a, you know, an online mentoring program. They can do that, that, but they can access access that thought leader in different in different ways for different at different price points as well and and uh different access levels as well my one-on-one coaching clients i've only got you know maximum five because it's pretty expensive and i only want five i've only got the bandwidth for five okay Mm -hmm. now they've they've got the back phone to me and and they know it and then they they pay for it you know but that's not for everyone and i don't want it to be everyone i'm not trying to be everything to everyone but those people who would love to do coaching with me might want to do a group mentor, you know, a, a group coaching program, a group mentoring kind of program instead. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yep, so, yep. but 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 for sure, each of those modalities do complement the next. Yeah, and you yep. build you you build your suite of offerings that way. Yeah, yeah. Nice one, nice one, travel. Nice one. You've done, you've done, you've done great there. You know, but in doing in in doing all this, you know, the, you you must have probably come across some let's say some difficulties, a bit of issues and, you know, how, how have you managed to, to, to solve those situations, you know, challenges along the way? Um, well, you know, it, it, it's one of the, one of the issues that I faced a few years ago is, is I boxed myself in as a speaker. I, I did, you know, and I've had to remind myself of this whole thought leadership practice thing I just described. So I box myself in as a speaker. Right now, you look at, and we joked off off air or on air before, it was, you know, right now with isolation and COVID-19 and everything mm-hmm. else going on, mm-hmm. no no international flights, no big events. Nothing, so as nothing. a speaker, as a speaker, if I just did speaking, I'd be screwed. Absolutely. Okay? Sure, we've pivoted and we're doing online events and I've got one for about, 1500 people on wednesday uh, for a real estate company it's all online event it's going to be massive um but if i I was only doing that which i know a lot of my colleagues have only are only doing that that's their only modality they're putting out into the world it's it's just shut down their business overnight so that's not a good place to be um and i kind of realized that i did realize that actually a few years ago and it wasn't until a, a, another founder CEO, a friend of mine, said um, he's a he's a franchisor of a big a business coaching franchise around the world. So they've got like two thousand business coaches around the world in about eighty countries. And he said, "Oh, after he gave a talk at his at one of his uh, conferences down there in South Africa, he said, oh, I think you're onto something with this whole bucket list concept. Have you allowed other people to teach your stuff?" And the scarcity mentality was like, no, no, this is my thing. This is what makes me special. This is my niche, you know, niche, whatever you call it. 
and uh, and he's like, dude, I reckon it could really help some people. I know it could help a lot of our business coaches actually talk about life, you know, and and they could probably keep clients for longer. You know, have you thought about scaling this thing out? And and I thought about it and went, you know, I I when I talk about bucket lists, I talk about um, you know legacy. I didn't have one at the time. I've got four kids in my life now. Maybe, and maybe it's because I'm going a little bit grayer. <laughs> I went, you, you know what? I'm uh, let's let's have a look at this thing. So January 2018 saw uh, saw me create another company, and then and then basically uh, allow a certified bucket list coaches around the world. Now we're in 21 countries. And we've got bucket list coaches around, you know, teaching, teaching my stuff, which has been pretty cool. So that's how going from scarcity to abundance and going from helping people to now really helping people. Um, with that being said, there's been heaps of ups and downs. The key to really staying true is just complete determination and persistence towards a vision and a mission. You know, like, like I cannot, I've heard a lot of, you know, like, like business, you know, business people over the years said, you know, it's about vision and mission, but when shit gets, you know, tough and you get, and you get smashed from different, different sides um, and you might get thrown off track, it's that vision and coming back to that heartfelt vision and mission of why you're doing what you're doing. Um, without that, uh, you're lost. And you'll get taken off the path, and uh, so, mate, that's what I've had to do, uh, especially over you know over the, the recent times, is just to realign myself with what that vision and mission is. Um, people will come and go. People, you know, they'll, they'll, there'll be people that promise the world and don't do anything. There'll be people that you know come in and try and rip you off, and I've had that happen before. Um, so you've got to have all these measures in place to yeah. mitigate, you yeah, know, yeah. all, all this crap that goes on. And I'd hate to say, but the more of that, that actually happens it, it, and the faster it actually happens, I call it failing forward faster. The more, you know, the quicker that, that shit goes on, the better, because you just get that lesson, 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 lesson. And now I, you know, now I can, <laughs> I can cope with, cope with a lot of that stuff and you got to you got to be able, able to adapt and innovate yeah yeah Trav, absolutely absolutely so you, you just mentioned about you know you you have people coaching your, your program around the world yeah so how do you how do you monitor these guys how do you do the quality checks because you you, you can you can tell them do this do this do that do that do that you know how how do how do they follow your blueprint program you know to to check that make sure that they are still on cost with whatever your, your, your message is, your, what your vision is, you know, how, how do yeah. you monitor that? Well, you know, essentially our, our programs get, get results. If you mess with it, you don't get the results that you, that you can actually go out into the marketplace and actually promise. Um, and uh, you know, people pay to play. So it, it's funny when people pay, they pay attention. When they pay more, they pay more attention, you know, so when people pay for something, they want to get they want to get the training, they want to get and they want to get extract value from what they paid for. So most will just follow the bouncing ball. Some will go rogue, and then come back and go, "Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just didn't know." You know, like, "Yep, I'll fall in line." Some just go rogue and never come back, and we kick them out. Um. But at the end of the day, um, most people, you know, touch wood, most people just follow, you know, follow what we prescribe because it works. You know, why, why mess with something? Why try and reinvent the wheel? And we're very upfront with all that. Like, if you want to do your own thing and not follow our system, then, then don't, don't invest into the training or into the certification. It's simple as that. Go do your own thing. I'm totally okay with that. But if you do want to... Um, blend what we're doing with what what you're maybe already doing then sweet let's let's uh let's lock arms and let's go go change lives um but yeah we've got all of our checks and balances in place i've got a team to support and look after them 
we're producing more marketing collateral and sales tools and that sort of thing for them to use this framework the bucket list coach framework allows them to really be themselves and not be a carbon copy of me or anything like that so it's not as strict as it might sound yeah what what, what about your coaches around the world as well how, how do you how, how do you like monitor them to make sure that they are, they are dishing out your 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 blueprint vision as well you know because you, you can you well, can train someone calls. yeah okay yeah we have weekly calls with them all so um and we got you know a, a roll out business plans and we get them to submit business plans uh annual quarterly business plans and um get out there and you know set uh you know, set minimum KPIs with them as well and make it to ensure that they're actually going out there and helping people and also re- realigning them with, with our vision as well. We've got an online component and we can check in and we've got Facebook groups and we've got, you know, we're really like a tribe mentality. It could always be better, but um, yeah, we try and bring and we, and we try and support them as much as we possibly can. And we make it about them. Yeah. You know, not just about the client, but we make it about them. We 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 literally, because we're you know all bucket list coaches, we're actually all keeping each each of ourselves as a tribe of coaches. We're all keeping ourselves accountable um, to our own bucket list before we can go and help others. So literally, we had a global co- we had a global call on Friday, and it was the first question I asked was, oh, "What's next on your bucket list, guys?" I'm like, oh, wow, I thought we were going to talk about business. And I said, well, what's next on your bucket list? And are you actually living, your bucket living the list. message? Yep. Yeah, are you actually living, you know, like practicing what you preach? And it took a few of them by surprise. And, uh, you know, I know I know now they've gone back and gone, oh, shit, you know, we're, we're going to be I'm going to be practicing what we preach if, if I'm going to be in this tribe. <laughs> Part of our culture. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, people sort of miss the con- the conception about you know the bucket list or to do list. You know, so here's the bucket list and here's the to do list. You know, yeah. can you clarify that? You know, I just for someone that's listening, that's oh, how yeah. what's, what's the difference between a bucket list and a to do list? How do I how, how do I differentiate that? Oh, look, yeah, it's a. Um, Look, I, I say that we're so busy being busy. You know, it's like this weird badge of honour that we wear, wear every day now. And and, um, and people are so busy being busy on their to-do list, not on their bucket list, until something traumatic or dramatic happens to them or a loved one or you get given a use-by day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what, what I've been doing for the last 10 years and what our coaches now do too is we take people out of their, you know, take people, take people out of their lives to work on their lives. You know, very few times do we get the opportunity to just take a big deep breath in and, and recalibrate on what our what what we want the rest of our lives to look like. So we help people. I say a bucket list is a tangible life plan where our career plan or our business plan should fit into our life plan, not the other way around. So we bring home the work to live principle. And at the end of the day, I, um, people do need to take that time out to get maybe into a group environment, a supportive environment with the help of a coach to allow them space to really think. Because unfortunately, and you, you and I both know people like this, and I see them every single day when I go and talk and, and do events and that sort of thing, where people, suddenly people reprioritize in their bucket list when they get given a cancer diagnosis, just like the movie. Yeah. You know, and I want to wake people up before they get given a diagnosis, before it's too late. But why does it, my, my biggest question, why does it take a freaking cancer diagnosis for someone to reprioritize their life? That's messed up. But we all do it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We're so busy on our to-do list that we forget about our bucket list. And in fact, it's swimming up there in a, in a, in a soup with our to-do list and our daily to-do list takes priority. I'm not saying don't do your to-do list, but let's, let's give your bucket list some space because if we don't, the rates of depression, the statistics around anxiety, the, the loneliness, loneliness epidemic, which is a thing right now, Pre-COVID, it's even worse now. 
the rate of suicide, the amount of uh, the rate of um, you know men- the mental health of the planet, the over prescription of antidepressants in in uh, adults, even in teenagers, mate, it is at unprecedented levels. So with all that going on and increasing. We need some sort of tool. We need some tools. We need to. We we need to take stock. We need to we need to fix something. We need to. We need to another approach because that shit's increasing, man. That shit's increasing. Even though there's so much more information, self help information, and you know, uh, coaching and and all that. There's so much of that around, but yet the stats are still climbing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. We're so busy on our to-do list. Well, if we keep going the way we're going, those stats are just going to keep increasing. The conversation is not going to change. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to add to that as well, you know, um, issue about mental health as well, you know, that's, that's a big issue that needs to be looked, looked on as well, you know. Well, everything, everything that I teach, because I've been through that, um, everything that we teach, the foundation of what we teach is based mainly on positive psychology. Positive psychology is pretty much the science of happiness. How to help a person, an individual, and a company, which is full of just people, uh, identify what gives them more meaning, what gives them more purpose, and what gives them more fulfillment in life, and, and a sense of gratitude as well. That's the foundation of, hap- of happiness, of of helping people live a regret-free life rather than a regretful life. Unfortunately, um, we're just not built that way. We haven't got the, uh, the influences around us to keep thinking that way or, or to have that as a priority for us on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, Hence why I reckon that people need, do need coaches to take them out of their life to, to discover this stuff. Yeah, so sort of like backtracking because uh, as you as you as you're on a journey, you, you you see so many things that will distract you. So you need coaches like you, you know, people need coaches like coaches like you that would bring you back on track. To mm. say, you know, yeah, 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 or find the track in the first place. <laughs> mate, yeah, you know, yeah, like, like yeah, you have to. One find, of the find things it. that I say is people, you know, people are dying at forty, and then being buried at eighty. That's deep, deep, that's deep. And, and people are sleepwalking through their life. They're on the treadmill, don't, don't even know it, unconsciously. They're in the matrix. Yeah. Like, like you, like you, you know, say. Waiting, yeah. Yeah, waiting like for you. some day to come around or, or the perfect time to go and live your life. It's like, shit, what, is that going to take a cancer diagnosis for you to get off your ass and go, and go be... And what sort of example, if adults are listening to this or watching this, what sort of an example are you setting for your kids? Sheeple. I call sheeple. them sheeple. Yeah, sheeple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, can, I can see them in the audiences. Like you see, they love, they love sheeple out there, you know. So how, how, do, you, how do you not help this sheeple? Because it's, it's easy to just fall off the, fall off the wagon and just, and just doze off, you know. And because of people are going through different things, you know, you, you might, it, it might be financial issues, it might be relationships, it might be... It, it, might, it might be kids or family stress, you know, mental health, a yeah. whole range of things, yeah. you know. So how, how do you how, how do you bring these guys back on track? Yeah, well, they're all excuses um, <laughs> for for what you know, like using your kids, even using what like, I've got no money, no resources, no time. That's the best one. No time. I've got no time to think about my bucket list. Really. All right, well, well, stop complaining then. You know, like, like I've got no time. So, it's funny, people, it's not a matter of resources, it's a matter of resourcefulness. The why is not strong enough for most. When the why is strong enough, the how will work itself out. Absolutely. And again, remember that most people, if, if, if a doctor told you you've got 10 years to live, how would you, what would be the decision-making process from here on? What would be the decisions that you'd make about your life? Like right away. Yeah, what would quick. be the decisions about your business? Suddenly, suddenly with that pressure, that pressure has been applied now. Suddenly you're making decisions that you know you should have been making all the way along. But now you've got a finite 
finite time left. And so suddenly you become the greatest decision maker known to man. The, the, uh, you're an absolute ninja in time management. You're an, you reprioritize like a mofo. And, and you're suddenly getting shit done where before you had all these excuses of why you shouldn't or why you couldn't or, or why it was hard. Yeah, kids are kids are kids are a bullshit excuse because you know I flip it around and say, okay, well, um, the what sort of example are you showing? You know, like I, I say, uh, be a bucket lister first and foremost. You know, a, a bucket lister is someone that's that's you know always seeking happiness. You know, seeking adventure, having fun, a good mental you know outlook, a glass half full kind of person. Um, always when, you know, when you catch up with them, they're, they're always a, a positive person, new tale of advent, new, new story to tell and that sort of thing. Or are you the type of, per- and are you that type of person? Are you that type of leader for your family? Because that type of person, that enthusiasm really sells. It has a, a, a fantastic domino effect into the rest of, uh, rest of the uh, uh, of areas of your life. Yeah, you know, absolutely. it really does. And and what sort of an example are you showing for your kids? Do you want them to be that sort of person or the opposite, which is, you know, the kind of person that when you catch up with them, you know, you feel like you need a wash or a holiday afterwards. <laughs> so you don't want to, you don't want to, you want to limit your amount of time around those sort of people. Yeah, 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 Trav, absolutely. Uh, Trav, you, uh, you, you seem to be a very busy guy, you know, in terms of time management, how do how do you how do you manage your time? Um, I don't manage time. No, that's that's, uh, and I don't have life balance. Those are two bullshit terms. All right, you put things in your schedule. You create your own schedule. Number one, you create your own schedule. You don't be anyone else's bitch. Okay, you don't be at the mercy of someone else's agenda. First rule in business, create your own time and create the, put the things in to your schedule before anyone else does. Um, And have very little white space in your calendar. Always keep yourself busy. Because in that white space, that's when the devil will creep in. That way, that's when you'll procrastinate. That's when you'll you know you'll go down rabbit holes and, and do things that are not serving your business um, or or your life. Um, schedule everything. Um, go to highest value activities, what I call MVPs, most valuable priorities. Put those in your diary. Create a daily to do list. The night before, identify the three MVPs, schedule one hour to 90 minutes for each MVP every single day, schedule in family time, schedule in schedule in health and fitness time, schedule in as much as you possibly can. So no one messes with it. And you're doing the things that you know you should be doing. Like take charge of your time, first and foremost. So you're not managing time, you're just creating it. And if you want to create even more time, well, that's when you leverage through technology and other people. Okay, so to, to schedule that time for you? You have to. You don't, whatever you do, you know, you've, you know you've lost the game. And it's just a game. You know you've lost the game if you wake up and your, your diary's empty. Like, that's, you failed. Um, so that and and also the concept around work life um, work life balance, nothing ever balances. Like if you want to grow your business, um, something's going to give, or you're just not you're just not giving it space. You know, for something to balance, it means it's you know fifty fifty. It's not the way. Like if, you know, you, you talk to a you talk to a, a really successful business owner um, in the early days of startup, there is no balance. 
It's obsession all the way. But it's also training everyone else around you, just informing them, well, for the next year, honey, for the next two years, <laughs> this is what life's going to be like. I am obsessed. I'm driven. I want to get this result. And this is how, th this is the, um, this is how things are going to go. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta make the people around you prepare as well for that, yeah, man. For, that, yeah, yeah. For, that for that journey. And, and yeah. And, and, and the other thing, the other thing I forgot to mention in the, the time, the, the, the time management thing is don't, um, don't multitask. It's such an overused, like, like people who think they can multitask and they're, they're great at it. Um, that's just, you know, the best CEOs in the world do one thing in a half an hour time block. They do one thing and one thing only and they start and finish it and then go to the next one. Just bang, 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 bang like that. They don't try and multitask. That's great. So in terms of run, running your, running your own business, you know, I, I know you, you've, you've, you've done this for a lot, for a, for a long time now, you know, trying to create roles, you know, multiple roles, you know, do you, do you handle multiple roles in your organization or you, or you have each role set for each, each person? I've got an operations manager, marketing manager, business okay. development, legal finance okay. manager. Okay. So and yeah. you, you also so, have like a, a video guy, audio guy and all that yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they, they then, um, you know, like under marketing, I don't even know who we pay money to half the time, but um, it's, uh, we've got a social media ads person, we've got a video person, we've got a... Um, uh, even a link, you know, LinkedIn data mining person. We've got a whole bunch of different consultants. We we use heaps of different consultants around the world and graphic designers and people who put podcasts together, uh, yeah. website stuff, blah blah blah. Yeah, because the, the reason why I ask this question is because I I just I've I've been in podcasting for over a year, over a year now. You know, so I yeah. still manage my own stuff myself, like. I, I do the, I do the recording. I do my editing. I do my videos. I do them. I do my social media, Instagram, you know, I do all that myself, you know, so I'm doing, I'm doing all this now, you know, and also want to start putting videos on YouTube as well. It's becoming overwhelming for me now. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I still, I still go, I still go to nine to five, you know, and I'm doing this, yeah. you know, for someone like yeah. me, you know, I, I know you've been, you've been there for a long time. You know, what, what would be your, what would be your best, advice for me because i'm using myself as an example now because i i want to learn from this as well you know because i've, I've yeah. done i'm good I'm, I'm good at what i do like i can I, I do a lot of stuff i'm I'm very grounded when it comes to editing and videos and stuff you know i, I can do all that myself but i know it's going to come to a point where i don't want to be burnt, burnt burnt out you know so i'm thinking to myself you know how do i how do I manage this in terms of, you know, finances and, you know, that it's, it's all, you know, and I don't want to get to a place whereby I think to myself, do you know, okay, I need to think of how to make this work now in terms of business. Pick the, 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 the thing that takes up the most time that is the most repetitive and get someone else to do it. All right. So the creative stuff is a little bit harder to let go of. And to be honest, if you're going to get a, a VA, like a virtual assistant or someone on Fiverr or freelancer or Upwork or, or wherever, these are all, these are all sites that you can use to get other people to, um, and and these these sites are getting more and more. When I when I started doing this about ten years ago, there was only a handful of these sites, but now there's people everywhere. You know, we've got a remote work team, um, and everyone just consults to the brand. Um, to be honest, uh, I I would say it sounds like you know how to do everything, and that's and that's cool. Start doing trials with other people. You know, start doing trials out there, pilot programs where it's like, all right, here's a bit of work. Let's just see. It might be the editing or whatever it might be because um, editing takes a long time. So, uh, you know, look up podcast editor uh, onto one of those mini sites. Uh, buy a chunk of hours. Um, if they're in the Philippines or something like that, then they're always going to be cheaper. Um, traditionally, there's some really good and there's some really good, you know, better and better options out there too for people to get a remote work team, you know, doing stuff for them. Then you've got, but then you've got to manage that remote work team. So you can actually look, you can look at their reviews, look at the kind of work that they've done.
maybe even talk to past clients as well that have used their services and get the most predictable, the most boring, the most time consuming thing, the, the thing, that the task that uh, within the podcast that doesn't, you know, that does your head in the most, get someone to do that at a yeah. fraction of the cost. You've got to start prioritizing your dollar per hour ratio, your dollar per hour rate. Absolutely. Versus versus someone else. The overall thing that you've got to do is trust. Yeah, which which is which go. is yeah, which which is the which which is the number one thing because you, you gotta you, trust people. Yeah, would you rather yeah, would you rather would you rather get it hundred percent right and it takes you a whole week to get it? Or would you rather get it Let's just go with seventy five percent right, and it gets done in a couple of days. Yeah, and it makes it makes the production faster as well. Yeah, well, well, you know, you know what the world rewards speed, not perfectionism. Mm. As a True. as a good as a good one like that, yeah. Be a progressionist, not a perfectionist. Good. Move faster. So look at look at what you're doing, and look at your goals. Now I'm business coaching you. Uh, <laughs> you look at you look at your goals, right? You look at your goals, man, and you go, okay, well, I want to be here by this date, okay? And then and then go, uh, all right, well, my production, my production, you know, it takes me a week to put out a podcast. All right, what would it take? Let's create some new problems for yourself. What would it take for you to put on? Um, instead of one podcast a week, how could you do five a week? Mm. Now you get a whole other set of problems. Good problems. Act as if. Yeah. So that that that, that means you, you need you need to hire lose lose of people. Then you need to hire guys to to do the record do the recording do the editing. And you know, try and fast, try and make make speed up the speed up the process yeah. for you. Yeah, where a lot of people get it wrong is they go, okay, I'm going to outsource, I'm going to I'm going to get someone else to do that in the you know um, that bit. What you don't, what a lot of people don't do is then once you outsource that, we'll fill up that time by doubling up by doing something else, something else of higher value. Don't just sit back and go. I wonder if they're doing the you know the job right and I'm just sitting here doing nothing. You know, you should be doubling up whatever that time that time availability is now and doubling up on um your content on on you know the thing that uh that you're meant to be doing. All right, it's called the vacuum effect. You you find a you know put 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 some good stuff into it, you know, put some good stuff into that high value activity into that time now. Great, great, so I know I know that no one else in my business can do public speaking like me. No mm, one. No one mm. can do high 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 level coaching like me. You know, I actually and I actually enjoy um, creating some content. You know, and I'm 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 the best at doing that within my company. I can't. You know, no one else can be Travis Bell or the bucket list guy. No one else can be. So my job is to create, and I do do this, and I've had to go back and reinvent it a few times, but no one else can create content like me. So what if I just got up and started creating content, you know, like, just, and then as soon as I created, I just let go of it, let go, let go, give it to the team. Instead of going, oh, yeah, this is not right, this is not, you know, like, just give it to the team, go, 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 and just double up, like, create even more content. And it's up to them to create a system. Different way of thinking. Yeah, yeah, great, 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 great. Um, you've 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 done it for yourself, Trav. You know, you've done with you know with this whole COVID nineteen thing going on now. You know, what's the what's I, I we we just hope this whole thing passes. You know, but what's what, what's the next big thing for for the for the bucket list? You know, how do how do you because COVID nineteen has, has has given us loads of lessons. You know, lessons, yeah. lessons, lessons. You know, so what what is, what is what is the next big thing for you and your business? And you know, how how do you how do you want to forge forward? How do you want to do things differently? Because everybody's thinking about new ways of doing things now, aren't they? 
Yeah, well, we we're um all of our pro- all of our programs that we all of our coaches were running offline. We're now running online, and and that's been great. You know, I've got a I've got a program called the Bucket List Life Plan uh, that's starting July first, and and it's all online. It's a it's the first public one of these that I've ever done. I've always done them within big companies. So I'm doing one publicly and uh, where people pay for their own you know, ticket to it. And, and yeah, it's, it's online for the first time. So it's uh, yeah, su- going to be super cool. Um, so COVID-19 has allowed us to adapt or innovate to create more online programs. So we're going to do more and more of that going forward because getting groups together is, was already getting harder and harder. Um, and plus, uh, where I know for a fact that because we do a lot of you know stuff with companies around the world, and uh, I know that they're all wanting a positive excuse to bring their remote work teams together as well. And we focus on mental health, you know, team building, engagement, these sort of metrics within a company. So we're doing more and more online programs for remote work teams, you know, because I know a lot of companies just ain't going to bring all their staff back. They're, they're done. They're, they're closing down office space and Absolutely. they don't need as many desks anymore because they've experienced that they can save a shitload of money by having people work from home and it's, it doesn't affect productivity. So, uh, yeah, more online and also... So we're keeping that, and also I'm I'm also doubling up, tripling up, probably even more my 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 content as well. I'm getting asked more and more about about things close to my heart, such as mental health, uh, you know, uh, these sorts of issues, work life blend, these sorts of issues, more so now more than ever. Good, 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 trap, trap. It's, 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 it's changed a lot of things as well for, for like the big, big companies as well, like Google and, and Twitter and all yeah. that. I'm sure they're going to just go, you know, working from home full time now, all, all of the companies, you know, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to do that. Some are, yeah, some are. And, and, and but we've all, we, we've all seen how starved we've got, you know, not everyone's good at working from home, <laughs> you know, like, uh, and once the cafes and bars and everything else opens, you see how many distractions will be around people working from home because because people couldn't go down to the local cafe during all this isolation stuff. Um, they were forced to just you know be in front of Zoom all the time. But if you've yeah. got suddenly a group of employees that have never had to work from home uh, when everything's open. You watch them. You see how distracted they actually do get. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, Now, what 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 would be your last word to someone that wants to go into business and is thinking, "Oh, should I do this? Should I not do this?" You know how how how, how am I going to start? You know, because uh, to be honest, starting is the is, is the hardest part over over yeah. thirty years now. You know, what would you what would you say to that person and say, "You know, this this is how you start." Um, is is whatever you do, don't burn any bridges where you are right now. You know, don't burn any bridges. Don't say screw you, boss, and then and then leave. Um, you still want that reference. <laughs> you still want. You still might might need to come back and say, you know what, I, I I need a job again. So don't burn bridges. Whatever you do, don't burn your networks. Um, I would. Uh, I would find someone that's doing what you want to do and just model it big time. That would help you collapse time frames. Just do it like the, the path has already been set. Um, so read their books, follow them online, get access to them if you can. Do their, you know, pay or free, you know, get access to their programs to help you collapse those time frames because I think that's especially important that that will save you a lot of headaches than trying to figure it out yourself but that person has got to be authentic they've got to be real not full of shit and there's so many fake entrepreneurs out there now it's like everyone's gone online there's more coaches out there than freaking clients um there's a lot of people that are full of shit 
and so so sorting out those people from the rest is is a hard you know hard lessons to learn um and ensuring you know ensuring that your idea whatever that idea is that product or service actually does fix, fix a problem you know going into business for yourself just for the sake of going into business is kind of pointless but why are you doing it and what the heck, what what makes you special what what's the difference what's your angle what's your pitch yeah, what, what, sets you, what, sets you apart, what sets you apart? Yeah, what's the what what is the what what is the honest driver for why you're actually doing this? Otherwise, don't do it. You know, don't do it. Uh, you know, like like what is the prob what is the deep problem that you want to fix? You know, like like mental health is a massive massive driver for us, massive driver. But wanting to actually change the conversation and get personal development, you know, these tools that were that I've learned, that I've practiced in my life and I've helped a lot of people with, like actually like actually fly in the face of, of over prescribed over prescribed drugs for any depression. I think I think these personal development tools can can replace that. I honestly believe that. They're just not being conveyed in the right way. Or they're too rah rah, or they're too whatever. But I've seen the lights go on. I've seen people get off antidepressants and these sorts of things because of some of the stuff that we've done. I say, like, all right, I only need I only need a few examples like that for me to get fired up. You know, about wanting to help even more people. So what's the um, and and you don't even want to get me started on big big pharmaceutical companies and you know all that sort of shit, man. So so. At the end of the day, what is the fight that you're going to fight? What's the problem? What's the thing that just irritates the shit out of you? You know, seeing a person, you know, get to the end of their life and have regrets is, is like cuts to my core. You know, like it's like, fuck, life's way too short. Why, why too short? Why, you know, and if I can help people to take risks, take chances, to back themselves, to trust the process, then go for it. And, and the last thing, the last thing you want to do to all the advice of the business owner, what if you're 80? What if you look back on the timeline of your life? You're going to be pissed off that you didn't do something for yourself and didn't take that risk, didn't, didn't start your own business, or you're going to be like, yeah, no, I'm cool. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The true. problem, the problem is if it is, um, if it is a an itch that's been that's been itching for quite some time, but like when is the time that you're going to actually scratch it, like properly scratch it, because the itch will not go away. Yeah, and it's going to get worse it. and worse and worse and more irritating. So you need to scratch that shit as fast, <laughs> like soon, as fast like, as you hurry can. Hurry up, <laughs> and and be okay. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna fuck up some things along the way, but look, just like hurry up and scratch it. Get it out yeah. of your system. Yeah, and you have to be able to take those L's as well. Take take your losses, and you know, and you and you learn along the way as well. Yeah, man, like, and it has a ripple effect into other areas of your life too. It really does. Yeah, Trav. Nice one, nice one. So, what was the where's where's the best way to, to to get hold of you? You know, people that are listening and they, they want to get hold of Trav and they want to get they want to get into your program. They want they, they want you to be their their coach, mentor. You know, how where's the best place for to get hold of you, Trav? Yeah, the best um look the best uh the best point of call is uh the bucket list guy that bucketlistguy dot com. Uh, or people can email me even you know, if there's something that they've heard or seen and they want advice around, people can just email me, trav at thebucketlistguy.com or hook me up on the socials. Um, you know, uh, what am I on? I think Instagram's the one I'm, I'm most frequent on these days, which is yeah. quite sad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I started, I, yeah, I started following you on, 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 um, on Instagram anyway. So yeah, I, your page oh, is, pretty, yeah. is, pretty, is pretty cool though. I, I, like, I like it. It's cool. Yeah, what's that? The bucket list guy dot Uh no, sorry, bucket list guy dot 
you know, so, so yeah, man, look, uh, feel free to uh, direct message me and, and if I can help then great. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, it's been nice talking to, to you, Trav, you know, and for anyone that wants to get in touch, in touch, in touch with me, it's uh, Axe Pros Business, you know, on Instagram, I'm there, you know, if you email is Axe Pros, you know, so Trav, nice one talking to you, you know, grateful for your time, you know, really, really appreciate it, you know, giving me your time, you know, and um, hopefully we'll be able to build on this relationship. You, you know, you never know someday I might be coming to Australia, you, you, you know, you never know, so... <laughs> come on man come on get over here get over here it's it's I quite love, a long it's, it's quite a long journey though but i don't know man, but we'll man see another see excuse mother where do all these excuses come from come on come on you know i don't yeah, tolerate no, no. them no 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 def- definitely i, I want to because i i like i like to travel myself you know I, I've, I've been to america i've been to loads of places you know around europe and stuff so australia is one place yeah. that it, it, that you know i, I want to go and see how you know how people live there as well you know to be to be to be well, a nice experience i think i think it's pretty interesting you know it was a couple of hundred years ago that all the uh the english sent all the bad people all the convicts to a, a tropical island um you know and and that's what formed australia so the brits the brits did something right man <laughs> the brits <laughs> did something right they sent they sent all the hooligans uh to australia <laughs> so uh and that's how we all started us convicts down here. But no, I mean, it, Australia is on a lot of people's bucket list. And um, uh, yeah, so anytime you want to do round two, just uh, to talk it up, man. No, no worry, Trav. It's, it's been nice, man. It's been nice. I would, I would, I would, um, I would hook, hook this up, send you a link, you know, you can listen to it. And again, I, I do, when I, when I do my, uh, my, my podcast, I do kind of like a promotional video. So I, I would appreciate if you kind of send like a picture of what I can use. And I can also go to your page as well and take clips of your videos and yeah, run that run that, right. that behind it. And I'll and I'll send you that promotional video. And I'll also tag you as well. So you you, you can you can cool. see it on your page as well. Love it. Love it. And I'll pimp it out, man. Okay, okay, Trav. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the time, man. One one hundred. Right, yeah, see ya. Bye. See you, mate. Take care. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. Yeah.